Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac, and we're going to unbox the all new iPhone 13 and 13 mini. These are available in five different colors this year. And as you can see, I have blue and midnight, but it's also available in starlight, pink and red or product red. Now these start at about the same prices as we had last year, $699 for the mini and $799 for the 13. And you can go all the way up to $1,099 on the 13 at its top storage. This year you get an extra 64 gigabytes of storage for free. The bottom starts at 128 gigabytes. So we have 128, 256 and 512 gigabytes of storage available. Now these are also available for $30 more if you buy them unlocked. Again, like last year with the 13 and 13 mini, they're $30 more with an unlocked option. If you buy them through a carrier, you'll save $30 overall. So pretty similar to last year, as far as overall prices, let's go ahead and unbox these and take a look. Now here's the iPhone 13 mini and the 13, and we're going to unbox them together because they're so similar other than their size. I'll talk about the differences in a moment, but the iPhone 13 mini, as you can see is in midnight or it's their black color. Now these boxes were not sealed when I received them. Apple sent them early so I could take a look at them. This is not sponsored by Apple, but let's go ahead and unbox this. So we'll take the top of the box off. And as you can see, this is the iPhone 13 mini in midnight. It does have the wrapper on the display. Still we'll set it aside for just a moment. And in the box, you can see we have our lightning to USB C cable. So USB C just like you would expect nothing really different there from last year. And we also have a little bit of paperwork here. So we have a SIM card removal tool or ejector tool, a little piece of paperwork talking about the warranty. And then we have an Apple sticker to go along with it. So we have that in the box and that's everything we get. So let's go ahead and take the wrapper off the iPhone 13 mini. And you can see there already, we have that smaller notch. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but let me set this phone aside and take a closer look at the iPhone 13. And then we'll take a look at what the differences are. So the iPhone 13, you can see is in blue here, and this is a different blue than we had last year, sort of a lighter blue, similar to what they have with the iPhone 13 pro and pro max. It's a different color blue this year. And again, the exact same thing, only the contents inside is a little bit bigger as far as the overall packaging. So other than that, we have a little bit bigger sticker. It looks like compared to the mini. So in the iPhone 13 mini box, it's a little mini Apple that comes with it. So that's really the only differences as far as what's included. Now we'll go ahead and remove the cover from the iPhone 13. And that's the iPhone 13. So from the face of it, it looks pretty much the same as last year, but I wanted to do a quick comparison just in overall look. And here you can see the iPhone 13 versus the iPhone 12. So the iPhone 12 on the left, the camera arrangement is a little bit different. The phone is slightly heavier this year. Now on the iPhone 13 compared to the 12, the first thing you notice is the power sleep wake button is a little bit lower or moved down on the iPhone 13. The millimeter wave antenna looks to be in the same place. And also the camera bump is ever so slightly larger. So you can see that here and you do get a little bit of extra weight. It's 6.14 ounces or 174 grams on the top. They're basically the same. Now on the left hand side, you can see that the volume buttons and silent switch again are moved down slightly and the SIM card tray is actually moved up slightly. So it's just a little bit different there ever so slight difference. And then on the bottom, they're basically the same. So if we'll spin this around here. You can see that they're the same. Now you can see the iPhone 13 mini and iPhone 12 mini are very similar, except for that camera bump. Again, you can differentiate them that way. And the camera bump again is a little bit larger, but as you can see the power sleep wake buttons and the 5g millimeter wave antenna are basically the same on the 13 mini and the 12 mini on the top. You can see it's the same. And also on the other side, the volume buttons and silent switch and SIM card tray are all in the same spot. So they're very similar that way. Again, on the bottom, they should be the same as well. So not too many differences between the minis other than the camera module this year and most likely the displays. We'll take a look at that in a moment, but the weight is different as well. It's now 4.97 ounces or 141 grams. So ever so slightly heavier. Now the displays are the same as last year, as far as the overall specs. So let's turn this on so we can see the notch a little bit better. We'll turn them both on. 
and we'll set them up in a moment, but they both have ceramic shield on them and they are the same sort of size and resolutions as last year, 5.4 inches on the mini and 6.1 on the 13. Now the 5.4 inch you can see and the 13, the displays look about the same, but the notch is a little bit narrower and maybe a little bit deeper into the display. So it's a little different. You'd have to determine for yourself whether or not you like that or not, but the 5.4 inch display is 2340 by 1080 pixels with 476 pixels per inch, just like last year. And the iPhone 13 again has the same sort of resolution as last year, 2532 by 1170 with 460 pixels per inch. This year, they both go up to 800 nits of regular brightness and 1200 nits peak brightness, basically when you're viewing HDR content. They have true tone, but on the 13 and 13 mini, there is no 120 hertz ProMotion display. That's reserved for the Pro models. So you also have haptic touch like you would expect. And let's compare the notches quickly as well. Now you can see the differences in the notch here where we have the iPhone 12 mini and 13 mini and iPhone 12 and 13. The notches are definitely different. You can see they're narrower. And again, they may protrude a little bit further into the display. Now this year we have an all new a 15 bionic CPU with a new six core CPU with two performance cores and four efficiency cores, a new four core GPU and a new 16 core neural engine. I do believe we still have four gigs of Ram. We'll check that out a little bit later and we'll talk about the cameras later as well, but let's get these set up. So we'll go ahead and set them up. I'll set up one and then I'll set up the other after, but let's pick our language here. So we'll go back and you can select English. Now the easiest way to set this up is just have another phone nearby to add it to your account, whether that be an iPhone or not. So I'll get it set up. So you'll see if I bring it close here, it says set up a new phone. We'll go ahead and hit continue. I'll scan it here. Now we'll put in the passcode of the other phone. Now we'll get face ID set up and I'm setting up the other phone at the same time, but we'll go ahead and get started here. We'll scan my face. Just move your face around. If you've never set this up before, we'll just move in the opposite direction, fill in all of the ring here, and then we'll hit continue. Now it's asking if we want to transfer data from another phone. I'm going to set this up as new for now, but we'll go ahead and hit other options. Now you'll see it says, make this your new iPhone. And it just gives you your latest backups that you might've had from other devices and also your settings. You can customize them here. We'll go ahead and hit continue. Now we can either share audio recordings with Siri or not. And then app analytics, you can share those or not. And then it says restore from iCloud. So it's going to restore my settings from iCloud, but not all of my apps and everything. Now you can see we're at the home screen on both phones. And if we take a look at what version comes pre-installed with it, we'll go to our settings, then general, then about, and you can see we're on iOS 15. So that came pre-installed with the phone. And also I wanted to take a look at the wallpapers since we didn't really have any new wallpaper with iOS 15, but we do have some new ones with the new phones. So we can go to live here and you'll see there's five different wallpapers to go along with the five different colored iPhones. So if we go into maybe this one in the middle here, we can press and hold and it's a live wallpaper. So we can haptic press and have a little effect on each one of them. So a very similar effect on all of them, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like. So it's a nice little addition, although they aren't added to other iPhones, just the newer ones. Now, as far as the cameras go this year, the cameras are not too much different. However, they did move the camera over to the left of the notch and move the speaker up. But the camera is similar to last year where it's a 12 megapixel F 2.2 aperture camera. And it can this year, according to Apple record 4k 60 P in HDR. So if we go into our settings, go over to camera here. We'll go down, find camera under camera. You'll see we can record video at 4k 60 and also have HDR. We didn't have that option last year. We could record up to 30 frames per second on the less expensive non pro models. So now we can record an HDR this year if we want to do that. So that's something they've updated and they've also updated the rear camera as well. In fact, there's a big update with the rear camera. We have a dual 12 megapixel camera setup, but we also have sensor shift stabilization this year and a much larger ultra wide sensor with an F 2.4 aperture that lets in 47% more light. And it's 
should be much, much better. Now also the wide is an F 1.6 aperture, which can collect a lot of light. And then we also have a two X optical zoom with five X di digital zoom with again, that 4k Dolby vision HDR. So these should be really nice. And we also have smart HDR four, which can now recognize up to four different people in a scene optimization. So let's go into the camera and we've got some photographic styles this year. So we can choose a style and you'll see it shows different styles and how this would work. So you can have it set to what you like. Maybe you like more contrast. You want it to be a little bit more vibrant. It will do this by default every time you take a, a, a new photo. So if we go back to maybe just standard and we're in photo, we can tap the little arrow here and then we have some different styles. So we have standard. And you'll see if I put this phone behind it, we've got standard, rich contrast, vibrant, warmth, and cool. And then we can adjust the tone on each one of them. So we can adjust the tone. We'll adjust this here and set it that way. And then we can adjust the warmth ourselves as well, depending on what we like. And it will stay that way the next time you take a photo. So if you want it to look this way, it will look that way all the time. So that's something they've updated. They've also added a new cinematic mode to video. So we can go to cinematic for video and it will add depth of field. It's doing real time processing with a portrait mode and it adds depth of field. Although I'll test that out further in a review, but it adds depth of field in 1080p and Dolby vision HDR, and you can record cinematically and kind of change the focus. It does what's called a focus racking or focus pull where it will change from one subject to another. Apparently it will recognize devices as well or objects and people. So I'll be testing that out in my review. Now, again, this year we do have stereo speakers just like we did last year. And also we have a much larger battery. This year it will last 1.5 to 2.5 hours longer, depending on your device in the mini, the 13 mini compared to the 12 mini will last a hour and a half or so more according to Apple and also up to two and a half hours more on the 13 thanks to the new a 15 processor and even a little bit more room inside since the phones are a little bit heavier, maybe a little bit thicker as well. Now it does have upgraded 5g for more carriers around the world. Although millimeter wave will not be available everywhere. It's still at least having the option for sub six for 5g. Also, we have IP 68 this year, which we did before, which gives us six meters for up to 30 minutes. Now let's take a look at the Ram quickly, since a lot of people want to know that we'll let this app load here, Geekbench, and it shows 3.60 gigabytes or four gigabytes of Ram. I suspect the same on the mini, but let's go ahead and check. Now on the mini, you can see we have 3.62 gigabytes of memory or four gigabytes of Ram. And another thing to note is a lot of people want to know how warm the phones are getting since the iPhone 12 series phones did tend to get a bit warm. There's some slight warmth on the back, but it's just normal from booting up the phone for the first time and getting it set up. It's not very warm at all, which is a great sign. Now, as far as PWM, I know a lot of people want to know about that since the displays are a little bit different. So you can see there is PWM that's to be expected on any OLED. It's the way it controls brightness and it does seem to bother about 10% of people or so, but on the iPhone 12 series, it didn't bother me at all. So I'm not sure if this will be any better. I'll have to try it over the next few days, but it can cause you to get headaches or feel nauseated. And thankfully it doesn't really cause that for me on the 12 series phones. So I would expect the same from these, but but again, I'll have to use them for a few days to know that for sure. Now, as far as the magnets in the back, I thought we'd take a quick look at that. So here I have some magnet paper. Let's flip the phones over, see if there's any difference this year. And it looks like it's the same. You can see the speaker down here at the bottom. And if I bring in the 13, I expect it will be the same. So very similar layout, although there's a microphone magnet here. Maybe it's not as strong on the 13 and then in again on the 13 mini versus the 13 or the 12 mini, you can see it's about the same as well. So no real changes here with MagSafe. Also, let's take a look at the cases since I know a lot of people want to know how they fit. So this is the 13 mini case and let's see how it fits on the 12 mini. So you'll see the camera bump is a little bit different and this gives you a general idea of its size overall. So you can see it there, but the buttons do seem to work on the, the 12 mini with the 13 mini case, but it just doesn't look right. Then again, here's the iPhone 13 case. We'll put it on the iPhone 12 and you'll see it just doesn't align properly. 
the power button's not aligned, the silent switch is not aligned. So the cases are not compatible between the 13. You could get away with the mini cases though. That's probably the only ones you could use this year. If you have an older phone, you can't really use a 12 case on it, but you can use a 12 mini. You can also use this leather slip case as well with the 13. So if we slide this in, there we go. And it doesn't seem to recognize it though on the 13 mini with this case. So you really should get the specific cases this year if that's what you're looking for. So that's it for the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. And right now I'm recording with the forward facing camera of the iPhone 13 mini, and I'm not using any external mic, Plus I'm using cinematic mode. So this gives you an idea of what it can do. It's blurring the background naturally. And the iPhone 13, of course, can do the same thing. And this year, you're really only choosing between battery life and overall size with the 13 mini and 13 pro. All of the other features are basically the same. So you really can just pick whatever you want to use based on size. Now, as far as the cinematic mode, I'd love to hear what you think about it. Now, if I look toward the iMac behind me, it should shift focus if it was a person, but with an object it won't unless I have someone controlling it. However, I can control this in real time or after the fact. So if I look toward the iMac, you'll see that it's probably still out of focus. When I turn back, it probably is still on focus on me, but I'll have to see this after I record it, of course. But I'm really excited to use the cinematic mode. It is only in 1080p. I've upscaled it to 4K for the video, but it looks like it's going to be a great feature overall. Let me know what you think about it if you're picking up a 13 mini or 13, or even a 13 Pro or 13 Pro Max. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if there's anything else you'd like to see covered in the reviews after I use this for a little while, I'd love to hear from you there as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.